there's some good news. We can see clouds. It's about 5.30 in the morning. I get a little bit better visibility. The sunrise a bit. I don't know. I don't really smell too much smoke. I can see a bit of blue in the sky. I really don't know. It's a beauty morning. There's some mist on the water and everything. I've been getting up earlier and earlier every morning now. It's hard to stay in bed with this birds chirping this, this nice and the sun coming up and anticipation for the day. <laughs> nope. Oh. Yeah. So this is east. Obviously the sun is rising and the town of Red Lake is to the east of us. So we're hoping that it looks just as good as it does here there. To the west it's pretty smoky still. But uh, yeah, we'll see. We're going to we're supposed to call Harlan on the sat phone at 10. <clears throat> it's just about 7 o'clock now. So, yeah, just out for a little paddle. Kyle's eating breakfast. I was up a touch earlier than him. Let's go see if I can grab a little walleye or two, just for fun. Potentially the last paddle. Tons of ash in the water here. Oh, we got a fishy. Nice walleye. Real nice walleye. Pretty. Come here, big guy. place is unreal guys like honestly you almost you, you can almost guarantee food you can almost guarantee catching fish beautiful fish thanks bud I hope I got that. Been out paddling for about an hour now. Just so calm. Just 
listening to the sounds of nature out here. This is the world. Listening to the sounds of my world out here. <laughs> Having some time to reflect on the trip. I'm feeling very lucky to have had very good health this trip, with the exception of one day, which is better than I could have thought, better than I could have imagined. Very blessed to live in Canada and have this at my doorstep. I drove 16 hours to get here, mind you. But I do have things that I can do like this around home. Getting a bit shallow in here. Time to pull up the old deep diver. I'm happy to have a buddy like Kyle who will come out here and do this with me. I'm sure we get annoyed at each other a lot. And <laughs> it's part of it, we know that. But, uh, yeah, happy to have friends who are into this stuff and that I can convince to come out with me. Boom, right at the boat. Little pike for the day. The legend of one fish Joe is no more. <laughs> yep. There we go, big guy. Just barely had him. Feisty. They smell like tin. Pike stink like tin. There it goes. Nice. So, again, deep diver. Now, that's when I was pulling up. You saw that. I just got him right at the boat. Very cool. Anyways, just, just feeling grateful, you know? Feeling blessed, feeling happy, feeling lucky. I would highly recommend this place, Woodland Caribou Provincial Park. If you like fishing, if you like canoeing, if you like getting away from it all. We saw, literally, we saw three sets of people in eight days. The first set was when we got dropped off. They were getting picked up by the same plane. So that was scheduled. The second set was a few days into it. We saw two guys from Minnesota or Wisconsin, one of the two. And then yesterday we saw three guys from Minnesota or Wisconsin, respectively. Um, that's pretty good for eight days. You know what I mean? Everybody kind of keeps themselves. Everybody's pretty respectful out here. Nobody's in infringing on anyone else's space or experience. This is the second time I've been to this park, and it won't be the last. I do have... Like I said earlier in the video, I have wishes of bringing my wife, my kid, my kids, when she's old enough, my brother, to here, to this place, showing them. My brother's never been out anywhere. We tried to do it last year, it just didn't work out. I think it'd be awesome. We wouldn't even have to do a big old trip. We could get dropped off in Haven here, paddle over to Adventure, get some lake trout. Take a couple of short portages over to a couple different lakes, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be anything crazy. You can do whatever. That's another beauty thing about this. You can cater your, you customize your trip however you want. Harlan at Red Lake Outfitters has a bunch of packages, a bunch of different routes you could choose from, and we chose the walleye, walleye primer because we wanted to catch a lot of fish. And boy, boy did that work out. Excuse me one second here. couple of firsts. Kyle I think has caught one walleye before so he slammed a bunch. Got his first laker. I got my first laker here too two years ago with Sean. Since then I've caught a few. 
uh, for on this trip. And we did so we the three guys we saw yesterday told us they they went over to adventure and they uh they got 16 lake trout the one day and they got like 12 the next day or something along those lines between the three of them. Kyle and I only stayed out there for like hour and a half, two hours max. We got five between the two of us. So it's pretty good odds. Kyle's a married man now. So he's anxious to get home. As am I. 16 hours to drive, broken up over two days. Anyway, thanks for coming along, guys. Appreciate everyone sticking with me. There's lots more to come. I plan on doing this until I can't do it anymore. Making videos, being part of the outdoor bushcraft camping community. getting pretty smoky I'm just gonna finish up paddling and head back to the camp and sit down for a bit I'll keep you guys with me two walleye and a pike already <laughs> this short little leisurely paddle around one fish Joe no mo Hey buddy. What's up? Just enjoying the morning. Yeah, me too. Just kind of sitting here thinking about life. Yeah, I hear that. It's a really annoying crow or something over there. <laughs> breaking my meditative state. <laughs> they don't have those at hot yoga? No, they don't have those. No crows at a lot of hot yoga. <laughs> Water's got a nice little layer of ash on top of it. Yeah, quite a bit, eh? It's all part of the cycle, you know, it falls down to the bottom and fertilizes the plants, which fertilizes the little things, which the fish eat, and all that type of stuff. Educational morning with Kyle. Hey, no problem. Circle of life. We it's can sing that song all the rest of the day. And the part of the part of the Eddie no one Vet knows the actual words. Eddie right? Vedder's style. We don't know the words to any songs, really. It's a circle of life. Yeah, there you go. You got the chorus. <laughs> Everybody gets the chorus. Are you filming that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all, it's all curling right up. I haven't got anything yet. I got one like good bite by the by our, uh, campsite. Is it? I got a few walleye and a pike. I lost one pike. That's fine. Of course, I've been trolling at about this speed yeah. right here, so... Yeah, uh, I hear that. <laughs> uh, I did a little, like, three-minute recap on what lures worked and stuff. Nice, I was thinking about doing that when we came back to the... Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I just talked, like, here's what I bring, here's what I didn't use, here's my giant tackle yeah, box Yeah, we of brought stuff weights, all these darn jigs. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to eat the Mr. Twisters if they don't show up soon. <laughs> That'll be good. Mr. Twister Stew. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I got a bunch of leeches back there, too. We could throw in a little salty flavor, maybe. A bonus. Yeah. A little lemon. Hey, I got a lemon packet left. One whole one. <laughs> Melted plastic with leech and lemon. <laughs> it's a <so> survival, <laughs> survival cooking, right? Oh, man. Do I have your line? I don't know. That's oh, just mine all messed up. So a little rundown on the fishing gear. As always, I brought too much. I think that's a pretty common thing. But it's like you're coming out here. The main, the main idea is fishing, and uh, you don't want to not have enough. You don't want to have. You don't not. You don't want to have. You don't want to not have the correct lures. 
There we go. So I brought two tackle boxes. This whole tackle box I could have done without. I ended up switching all my decent lures to this one, and I've only used still but maybe three percent of these lures. So in the things that I didn't use, the main thing has to be jigs and a Mr. Twister, like ridiculous. I should show you in my oh here it is. In my uh, life jacket, there is one, two, three, four. Mm. I hear one. I That's hear an one. airplane. That's a bush plane. Yep. Yay, they're flying! Maybe they're coming for us already. Um, I got four in there. One more here, so calm down. Just calm down. Calm I'm down. so excited. Calm down. McDonald's. Oh my god. Anyway, so we got five uh, J uh, Mr. Twister type things total. Never used one. Kyle, I think, caught one fish on one in a weedless. Uh, yeah, in a weedless. Yeah, on that yeah. Johnson spoon. Right. That was it. Uh, so personally, we, I, I'm, Kyle and I don't think that jigging is necessary here. A lot of the times it was very windy. Sitting in one spot could be, and I understand you could go upwind a bit and get uh, pushed down and jig as you're going. I didn't need to catch any more fish. I didn't need to catch any more fish. The difference between catching, you know, 10 and 14 a day is like, okay, whatever. <laughs> you know, I'm both, I'm having an, the same amount of fun. Honestly, even 10 and 20, 10 and 30, like I, I'm not out here to, maybe we were out here to get numbers, but at the beginning we thought we wanted that. Anyways, I have a whack load of jigs in here different kinds got this little octopusy squiddy looking guy too um got like floating wraps are these whatever these things are crankbaits maybe um some some spinners uh yeah so none of that was used none of that was necessary the big three that win the day that win the week ripplin redfin this thing has seen some better days i used this on my first trip here it's all beat up. I'm retired. This one is retired now. The middle treble hook is taken out, so I don't have too much issue with the fire line and uh, getting stuck in it and, and too many hooks in the fish. I don't like that lure. I was almost about ready to cut it off your line and just chuck it into the, the abyss. Yeah. This was... you're, you'd get some, I remember one day you got like four in a row, and I got like none. I was like, what are you fishing with? And I, like, caught, hey, little lure. I caught the late first lake trout on this thing too, Yeah. which was awesome. It came up right up to the surface and grabbed it. Um, Ripplin Redfin, purple, yellow, and like a beigey white color. BBs inside, amazing lure for everything. Walleye, pike, and Lake Trota got on it. Winner of the whole trip, period. Uh, maybe not. Winner of the first part of the trip. Second, mm -hmm. second was this guy. This was the color. Okay, black, yellow, and okay. A little yeah. bit orange. This uh, deep diving CC Shad from. Co wrap, uh, cotton cordals. Really? Yep, yeah, not okay. even a wrap. Um, again, deep diver. It's got the big spoon on the front, so when it's hitting the bottom, it's just kind of bouncing, and then these hooks are, are hidden. This is what we're thinking anyways, because I never got this um, stuck once, and it was bouncing. I let out tons of line, a butt ton of... <laughs> so I counted it in seconds. I was usually letting out between 20 to 25 seconds of line after a, a hard cast and i think you were doing probably at least that if not more i wasn't counting i was just like i would cast and then i, I would like, psh, psh, get it like a bunch more out and then let it out when i was paddling um nothing scientific ever from joe no no but hey it worked it's not educational repeatable anything like that repeatable it worked <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> and also i'm just not sure if repeatable is a word that's what <laughs> And also, like in tippable. Uh, I like making up new words. <laughs> Len Thompson, number two. You guys have seen me rave about this. Kyle's been busting my chops the whole trip. I was, Len Thompson, oh, Lenny T. No, uh, the first time I was up here, the first lake trout I got on and the 37 inch pike I got on was all in the Len Thompson. I think it was a number one or zero. All silver, bigger than this. This was also hot. I caught a lot of fish on this walleye and pike. Um, mm. The only thing I caught. Lake trout on this trip were these two. Three on this guy, one on this guy. And that's new to me. Um, the only other thing I can say that I really enjoyed using, I had this Toronto Wobbler too, which kind of worked a little bit, but it's very similar to the Len Thompson. Just silver. Um, 
The only other thing I could say that I used and liked was this morning's EGB lure. I know I love EGB lures. This is just a spoon. These Slay Brook Trout and Algonquin. Gold, black, red dots. It's got this little uh, red fin looking thing. And on the back is black and silver. It's got all the bases covered. I got two or three this morning casting. That's the thing. I didn't cast much this trip. It was much tro mostly trolling, correct? Yeah, I, I said 95% of my, my catches were on trolling. There you go. Even, even probably more so for me. Um, but I cast this a few times today and I got a few fish on it. Really, really happy with it. And then in the, sh in the um, shade, uh, overcast, I just used this, I don't even know what it is, little brass, uh, Williams Ridgeback. So in all honesty, and I know you lose lure. I, I only lost two lures, I think, this whole trip. Um, Three, maybe four. Yeah, nothing much. Yeah. So in all honesty, I would... Be, be happy coming back to this doing this again this this spot I'd probably be happy with I wouldn't even probably bring that one I'd probably be happy with doubles of all these the rippling redfin the CC shad the uh, EGB lure just because I really like that lure and it's not necessary and Len Thompson and yep. then doubles or triples of those mine very very similar yeah yeah and that's it like in all honesty I have a bunch of spoons in here that would work. I think, again, Kyle said this, you can probably throw whatever. You know what I mean? But those were the hot ones for us. Um, I, I think I caught one on this Williams. Not much. I didn't switch up because you didn't need to. Didn't need to bring steel leaders either. This, we had 15 pound fire braid on one, uh, on, on my St. Croix one piece. 15 pound fire braid, never, lost a fish due to it snapping the line with his teeth. Um, whenever we would see it frayed a little bit, we'd run the line out, cut it, and retie it. But that was only like maybe once every two days. Like it yeah, wasn't it often didn't at all. Much. I never had like a big pike fighting it, fighting it, fighting it, and then snap no, and the lure's gone. I never had that. Nope, not once this trip. And my secondary rod was my ugly stick. I'm glad I brought two rods. The first time I've ever done this, I was anticipating losing or breaking one, which has happened in the past. Mm, a couple times. Yeah, just a couple. But uh, this is a cheapo uh, ugly stick, came with the reel, two piece, it's a six foot rod, it fits in my canoe really, really uh, tightly and nicely. I think this is a 40 or $50 dollar rod, it's very, very economical as opposed to something like this, but they both worked fine. On this one I have um, spider wire 10 pound braid and it worked, uh, it's camo and the other one is black and it worked fine too. No, no losses on uh, fish biting the, the line. So in our minds, steel leaders aren't necessary for this type of thing. Uh, what else? Oh, I, I brought this. Um, oh, these are always handy to have, which I normally don't have. It's just a little wrap. No, oh, those uh, are needed. Yeah, for cutting the line. I have one on my vest. It's That's the best, most important tool out here. Super handy. Um, I brought this thwart bag as opposed to a secondary backpack. Silly idea. We knew we weren't single carrying. My idea was this thwart bag was going to stay attached to my canoe. I would just throw it over my head and portage with it. It throws the balance off too much. I had too much stuff in here. Both those um, uh, tackle boxes in here, I've got a GPS, I've got pliers. I've got... You could have used it as an anchor and then done some more jigging. It could have done that, yeah. Lots of stuff in there. A boat repair kit. It would have made to total sense to just bring a secondary small backpack because you portaging once with your big backpack and then you can portage with the small backpack and the canoe anyways that is a uh, lesson learned for for old joe on that one and, and normally we are still carrying so it's not something that i even think about when i came here with sean we did double carry and i brought uh, a, a frost river pack and it worked well should have done the same no big deal uh our portages on this trip were minimal the longest was 800 most were like 300 or less and like only a few a day yeah like that first like one, two to three a day i think that second day was the biggest with the 800 it's yeah. nothing not anything we're compared they're to. i mean they're not like flat flat but they're not hilly i they're, mean they're not even as bad as algonquin no they aren't nothing like tomogamy i think the cool thing with your fishing setup is literally for about 75 bucks you could have that rod a couple of lures and be completely fine out here and catch fish all day. slaying tons of fish you don't need to spend you know 500 dollars on the best reel and rod mm. and all that i mean yeah, your $40 combo plus a couple of 4 or $5 lures, and you'd be plenty happy out yep, there. Yeah, no doubt. That's what we do. I would double or triple up on these, and then maybe a couple, just a couple uh, random else ones that would fill up fill up a small 
um, tackle box like this, yeah. as opposed to this being packed to the gills. I bought like a four pack Piker uh, spinner combo kit. Like I, I threw one or two. There's no point here. There's no point. Uh, if there was more rapids and shallows and stuff like that, for sure, I'd have been using that in there. And I did when we were there with no luck. Um, but yeah, anyways, smaller fishing kit next time by far. And I, and I know that, you know what I mean? And I knew that, but it's like, I want to catch fish. Anyway. Yep. Overall, very happy with everything. Um. I think we're going to call the outfitter now and see what the deal is because we just heard a float plane, so. Pizza or McDonald's? Uh, I'll do, like, a pizza. I'll do pizza. Pizza I can't sounds... Do, I can't do McDonald's. No McDonald's, okay. I do, uh, like, a... I do a pizza. Yeah, pizza sounds good. Pizza and a beer. Then a shower. Or some combination of those. Oh, things. my sh I'm going to knock on people's doors to let me have a shower in Red Lake before we leave. They're going to call the police. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get that sat phone. Let's do it. How are you doing? Joe. What do you mean, what do you mean, who's this? <laughs> no worries. Uh, we heard a bush plane, I think. We're starting to hear things? Okay. Okay. What's the, uh, you know anything yet or no? Okay. Say it again. Okay, thanks. No, I understand. Oh, we're okay. We're running low on food, but uh, we're just kind of posted up on Haven so we can get fish when we need to. Say it again. No. <laughs> Still going on, eh? <laughs> all right, so no news at all. Right. The uh, the sky is blue uh, on one side of us, but <laughs> to the north it's blue. It's smoky in the south. Yeah, to the north it's all to to the north it's all blue sky. And smoky to the south. Yep. B uh, slight breeze. No, there's been no wind for the past two days, really. Yep. Okay. When do you want me to? When do you want me to call you? When do you want me to call you back? Okay. Yeah. 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 All right, buddy. Bye. What? No good there? Significant delay. Well. Uh, I'm going to have a nap. Yeah. What's up, man? How's that map treating you? Oh, it's riveting reading. Yeah. It's just riveting. Have you got to the part yet where it talks about the hectares and the acres? Yeah, I already read that. That was the intro. I'm on the, the fishing part, so it's, that was helpful. Mm -hmm. I like reading the phone book or something. It is very similar to reading the phone book. Wait till you get, this is my favorite part, right? There. Oh, yeah. The places, names, I'm going to save that for later after lunch, perhaps. We can maybe discuss it, what you thought about we it, could, what we I could. thought about you it. You want to write a paper about it, maybe? Like I a five-paragraph essay about it? I do have a Sharpie for some reason. You do? Okay, do. well, that's good. We'll, we'll use that and we'll write a paper. Nice. Slowly losing our minds out here. Um, they were lost.
last long ago. <laughs> it's really hot. We have really no shade here except for this tarp and uh, moving sites isn't really an option. We have we have to stay on a big lake so that the plane can pick us up when the winds kick up and push the smoke away. That's what they're waiting for. So we had like six days of pretty heavy wind and like the past two days have been relatively calm. There's a little slight breeze now but like yesterday was glass all day. It's crazy. Like you could set your watch to it here, like uh, around like ten in the morning. The winds pick up and these last till about nine or ten at night, eight nine at night. Um, but not these past couple days. So yeah, sitting here hungry and uh, I'm trying to just stay out of the out of the heat too much. This tarp helps a lot. I took a little nap in my tent. I took uh, the fly off. But it was roasting in there, just like I got out, just out of out of sorts. I had to sit here in, under the tarp. Probably go swimming in a bit, and um, we're supposed to call Harlan back uh, around one or two p.m. It's about noon now, so yeah, I don't expect anything to change. I like I'd love for it too. We Kyle's gonna make that flight. I get home, we're done. Like in all honesty, we're done. Um, but yeah, I don't expect much to change there's not been wind to push the smoke away when I talked to him he said he couldn't see the little island across and it was maybe I don't know 300 meters or something so this is our life now this is the reality of it um, it's kind of we feel helpless there's not nothing we can do we tried like I said last night mapping out the way to get out not paddling happening. it's not happening I can't even walk around I I'm so drained I have have no food there's no way it's, it's gonna take two three days to get out of here so i can't do that and no food we can keep reading the map we're gonna do that we're gonna study and memorize we can quiz each other oh, later on on the place names locator yeah chart? yeah okay. nice crystal lake b4 garner lake a8 crystal lake uh, jason Voorhees. is that a thing there's actually three crystals. Yep. And we're listening to flies. Lots and lots and lots of bees and flies. And at least it's not mosquitoes. Bzzz. Losing our minds. Okay, well we got some different news now. The, uh, the skies have opened up a bit, the winds picked up a bit, and in Red Lake, they're cleared to fly. There's been a couple plane, planes that just left uh, a couple hours ago, but we're not high on the priority list right now. There's some people who have uh, have to get out for other reasons, medical reasons, and um, they've been in for longer and all that stuff. So what we're going to do is go down to the pickup point, which is <clears throat> in the north end of this lake. Uh, we brought all our stuff, so we're going to set up there. And we don't know if we're leaving today or tomorrow. It's no big deal either way. We're going to go down to the access point, near the access point, the pickup pick point, and we will um, set up camp there and just wait. We're supposed to call on the sat phone later on today to find out, and if not, then it will be out here tomorrow. So no big deal. To be all honest with you, like one day delay in a wilderness park like this is not a big deal. Like it could be a week, it could be, could be a bunch more. So um, we do have still food enough for today. And I think I will still supplement with fish. But uh, yeah, everything's been going good. We had fish for lunch. So I was able to save my chili, save my uh, peppered beef with rice, and uh, all is well. So we're just gonna, and it's, it'll be a change of scenery. We just went swimming at our old site, packed up everything left, and it's time to, time to move on. We've been there for a couple days and it's getting monotonous. So yeah, I'm happy to move, excited for the change. And uh, yeah, I'll keep you guys with us. Check things out, watch out for that huge rock. Check things out when we get there. Okay, another update. Um, we're not getting out here today and possibly not tomorrow. The, uh, the planes that they sent out earlier had to go back due to smoke they couldn't see. And uh, the one took three hours to do an hour long thing, uh, an hour long trip, whatever. Um, and we're, yeah, so we don't know. Everything's up in the air. Outfitter's doing what he can. Harlan's doing what he can, but everybody's calling him, and everybody's in the same kind of boat. There's no, uh, all the contingency plans and everything have been exhausted. There's no, no getting out of here. Everybody's backed up.
Uh, so hopefully they can fly tomorrow, and even if they can, we are low on the list. We might not be getting out of here because other people have uh, real, real issues they have to get out. So it's okay. Um, we're just gonna camp for a couple more days. You know what I mean? It's we're here. We got. Um, I have one more supper after this. Um, we have fish to catch. We have water. We have shelter. We have each other. Aww. So we're just trying to keep. Uh, positive attitude about it nothing's bad it's been people oh people have gone through uh, much more than this this is just extra camping so anyways I only have one battery one bar red bar on my last battery on my camera so I have to end this now um, I'll keep you guys with us whenever something happens but other than that um, we're here on this island in the middle of Woodland Caribou Park yep and I'm sleeping in a slopey as Slopius whoop me trying to tell me more about mutton dad oh my god <laughs> sheep camp bread like most Californian camp bread is baked in Dutch ovens some of it in the form of yeast powder biscuit on unwholesome sticky compound leading it straight to dysphoria that's my favorite that doesn't sound good well folks day eight in the books I've got a pretty flat level ground tonight, which is awesome. That hasn't happened mo most nights. Um, yeah, high spirit. What? <laughs> what day is it? <laughs> high spirits tonight, and uh, I'm really happy about it. I'll get with you guys in the morning. Sweet dreams. Oh, well, that's a good sign. There's a plane up in the air right above our lake. So maybe in a in an hour or so I'll give the. He's gonna run into us. Oh, he does. Maybe I'll give the outfitter a, a a shout in an hour or so. Well, it's uh getting a mic that's sketchy here. Hoping that plane comes very soon. Dern. Oh man, it's dark. Okay, well that was the worst timing possible. We got the call that the plane was coming. We got everything ready. We saw the plane. The plane was like right there coming in hot. And then this storm kicks up and the plane leaves. We are soaked. You can hear the thunder. Everything, uh, everything we have is put away. We have no shelter, and the plane left. The plane is gone because it couldn't fly in the storm. So now, what? This is day nine, morning of day nine. Hello, how are you doing? Ugh, that was a, such a tease. It was the, such a tease. Here, we could see it, he was coming in. And then you had to back off and go. I understand it was dangerous, I get it. It's just the timing was horrible. The storm just kicked up out of nowhere. We haven't had rain in the whole time we've been here. The whole time. Crazy. Well, here comes the rain again, yay. Here comes the rain again. How do you feel about what just happened? I, I don't I don't know how to express this feeling. No. It's like plane coming in, 500 feet, it's gonna land in about three minutes, and then and I'm like, oh, he's coming, he's scrubbing off altitude, he's gonna slow down, he's gonna slow down, and then he just keeps going that way. Yeah. More and more and more and more, and the lightning intensifies and the rain comes down. And we're here once again by ourselves. <laughs> we, but we do have all of our stuff packed we up. We have our stuff packed up. That's good. Yeah. And now we're all wet too, so. Soaked to the bone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was intense. That, like you're saying, that was something out of, like you'd see out of like a, a movie. movie. Yeah. I, I couldn't have scripted it. I wish I had a GoPro in my head. I mean, like that was like a movie. Yeah. Yep. Unbelievable. Okie doke. Yep. 
So the craziest part about all that was five minutes earlier and there was nothing. No black clouds, nothing. And now it's like 10 minutes after. And for the most part, it's cleared up behind us. But Red Lake is that away. And you can still see, obviously, it's not looking too clear over that way. Oh man, it, it was just the perfect timing. The perfect storm timing. What an adventure. This completes the story for sure. Well, now it's nice over there. And it's dark as night over there. Kyle rigged up this tarp. Thank you, Kyle. We're laying under here. Do you want some pine cones? Oh, we got, yeah. Just, I got lots of these. Thanks, buddy. They're really comfortable. It's like a back massager. Yeah, like who needs, yeah, whatever. This is uh, raining and sunny and we're just waiting. I I'm roasting alive actually right now under the sun. Uh, under the tarp? It's, I'm hot. I'm very hot, but it's pouring rain now. Yeah, you're all right. It's been uh, two hours. Two hours later. Joe and I are laying under the tarp on a nice, very comfortable bed of dirt. We're um, we're kind of done with the wild right now. We're ready for some real food. Our stomachs are both like grumbling because all we've had is beef jerky and Snickers bars for the past six hours because that's all we have to eat. I don't get this full sun and it's pouring rain. We are dirt merchants. Right we are now. dirt merchants. Right now, I'm a pine cone merchant. You might have dirt, but I got pine cone. Merchant of dirt. I'll sell you this, Joe. How much? I got three specks of dirt. Ooh. I'll make, make it four. Make yeah, make four. All right, deal. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Well, our little window of clear sky seemed to have cleared up a bit. Our little window of clear sky seems to not be here anymore. Getting another cell coming in. Yeah, that's some real deal stuff here. It's not much fun. You having fun, Joe? No. We've basically been sitting on our butts since 8 o'clock this morning. It's 2.40. Yeah, <clears throat> there's lots of thunder and lightning. And uh, not much else. Some rain. No plane. No plane. Or helicopter or boat or... Any other UFO, I don't care at this point. <laughs> Send down the foo. Whatever I need. Wasn't that fun? It ain't over. It ain't over. No, look at it. She dark. She big dark.
Hey, thanks, thanks for rigging this tarp up, man. Hey, no problem. <laughs> really glad I hauled this around. Yeah, it's starting to pick up a touch. Look, there's hail now. This is intense. It's hailing. Oh, here comes the sun. Look at it. Oh, 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 oh. I hope all blue. Oh my God. I hope all blue holds up. Oh, blue. Look oh, at blue. the hail. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> this is nuts, dude. Well, that's here now. We literally just got absolutely drenched. We had to, Kyle, rig the tarp up much lower now. Oh man, look at that, look at that. I've never had a storm like that before. Oh. Look at the wall of black. Look at that. Little black cloud there in the white. Oh, this place is wild. Big weather. Big weather. And then, blue sky over there. Back at it again. So what brings on uh, forest fires in the park is lightning. We haven't seen any of that today. No, not a handful. Not like for the past two and a half hours or anything. So that would really be a bummer if now we got delayed by, by fire, ready to get picked up, about to get picked up, plain in sight, then the storm comes, then the storm's done, and then the fire starts again. And that, my friends, no good. Might happen. Well, it's 5.30 now. We're not getting out of here. There's no way. Um, so we'll post up for another night. Really hope that uh, another forest fire doesn't pop up because that will delay us all the more can't get out to fish because it's storming so we hear something I thought I heard something jet? is it just a jet it's the second time we've been, we've been tricked
okay anyway like i was saying we're not getting out of here we're gonna post up again and uh pick up the last meal we each have pray and hope that we get out of here tomorrow morning because there's no fish to be caught in the storm Oh, lightning, perfect. No, that's what, that's what we were missing. So we've got our little, Kyle's got his tarp rigged up. We got some wood I split down earlier, some dry wood on the inside so that we don't have to use twigs for my twig stove. Kyle's all out of fuel for his uh, alcohol stove, obviously, because we're two days behind now, uh, farther than we thought we'd be, so. Okay, I'm gonna cook up some food. All right, we're gonna do up the open air pepper beef with rice and hope it doesn't mess my guts up too bad. I'm gonna fill up to the eight fill line. All right, she's done. That's what she got. Pepper, rice with beef. So peppery, so very peppery. But it's food. It's got that much food. That will fill up little Joe for sure. What you working with, Kyle? We got spiced lentils with brown rice. Some leftover Korean beef barbecue um, jerky I'm going to throw in there. Nice. It actually sounds like a pretty decent meal as a random thrown together thing. Right. It's uh, actually calmed down quite a bit. It's perfectly fine. We could go fishing. Mm. We could even land a plane here, you know. Imagine that! Landing a plane on the water! No yeah. way. Yes, you could do that. But then... But then... We wouldn't be here anymore. But then we wouldn't be here enjoying our lovely, you know, rehydrated dinners that are <laughs> might be our last supper ever. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, we're making the best out of it. Uh, I'm glad to be here with Buddy Kyle. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's good times regardless. So we'll we'll definitely look back on this with fond memories, I'm sure. I'm going to stuff my face now. We might even get dumb enough to try to do this again. It's going to be a long time. Like, our memories are going to have to fade a little bit. But we might be like, oh, let's do that again. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> let's go camping. Yeah. I'm a backpacker. Well, this isn't half bad peppered beef with rice. 90% um, of it's rehydrated. There's just still some crunchy stuff, but my tummy doesn't care. It's very hungry. The uh, lake looks... We're, we're like two stages away from being glass at this point. <laughs> we called the outfitter at 5.30 because the last plane couldn't run till could only run till 7 tonight, I guess. They can only go for 12 hours. You start at 7. Go till 7. So, it says... If you haven't heard a plane at 5.30, call me. At 5.30, it was like black still. And we were like, we're not going. Yeah, we're good. Just give him a shout. We're not getting out of here, right? Nope. We just sent a plane out and it came back. So, uh, um, anyways, that's when we decided to cook dinner. We just set up again. Um, they did say there's intermittent thunderstorms tonight and tomorrow all day. But to be ready for like 7 in the morning because if they can get an hour break... Excuse me, an hour window. They'll leave at about 6 a.m. So we're gonna leave Kyle's tarp up, the life saving tarp. And uh, yeah, just pack up real early in the morning and, and hope for the best. There's no breakfast. There's um, maybe we get out and fish tonight and keep a couple of fish for the morning or something, but who knows? Um, yeah, anyways, this pepper beef rice is, is filling and it's going down good. It's full of sodium, so I'm drinking lots of water and hoping for the best. We'll get back with you guys tonight sometime. We'll probably have some epic sunset tonight. Yeah, it'll be a great sunset, glass lake, loon in the background, all that kind of stuff. We'll be still here with little food. How was that storm? Was that the most epic storm you've ever seen? That was not fun. 
<laughs> my favorite part was when the entire tarp thought I thought it was gonna lift off, rip down all the yeah. trees, and the hail was just gonna smack us. Yeah, the hail. The hail was nuts. That was intense hail. It was bouncing off the ground like crazy. I mean, what do you like? How, they're like marbles. the size of like marbles. Yeah, it's almost like a big almost, peanut M&M. There kind you of go. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. And they would hit the ground, the soft ground, and still bounce like four or <laughs> five inches up. How is that possible? <laughs> how crazy. Oh, but God. You couldn't see across the lake. I mean, it was just white out. It was like a white out. And then we could smell smoke, too. Yep. Outfitter Harlan says uh, it's far away. No big deal. It's just winds bringing it in. But the smoke will be a big deal if we get delayed again. But Okay. We'll stick. Uh, keep you with us. Don't worry. Don't worry. We might have spoken too soon about the nice night. Uh, it's thunder and lightning and this. Is it raining? Yes, yes, Joe, it's raining just a little bit. What's that noise? It's, uh, it's thunder. Same thing we've been hearing literally all day long. Pine cones and pine cones. Well, that was one of the, if not the most intense storms I have ever sat through under a tarp. Not saying it's over. Slow down, maybe. Pardon? It'll slow down for a bit. Yeah, it keeps slowing down. It keeps stopping like every hour for a good 10 minutes. But like the amount of rain that just came down, there's no way there's gonna be a uh, forest fire. So that's a good thing. That's a bonus. Oh man. Bonus. That was a lot of water. It's a lot of water. All right, guys, a bit of an early night tonight. It's almost 9.30. Sat under that tarp all day long. Poured rain. It actually stopped raining now. The birds are singing. So I'm hoping that this stays like this. I hope the skies stay blue and the, the plane has no problem getting us in the morning. Uh, we have no food left, and I have a 16-hour drive home, and Kyle has an international flight that he has to rebook and wait for because, uh, obviously, you missed it. Uh, we were told to be ready for about 6 or 7 in the morning, and that's what we're going to do. So hope pray that there's blue skies, the plane can land, pick us up, no problem. Fly us back to Red Lake at least in that like hour and a half window. And then I don't care what happens. It can pour, it can storm, everything's fine. We can start driving. It's time to go. We've been here. Tomorrow is day 10. Long trip, good trip, but very eventful, <laughs> unexpected things. And we're done, so it's time to go. I'll get with you guys in the morning, hopefully from the plane. Good night. Good morning, folks. Day 10 here. We woke up pretty early. Did not have a good night's sleep. It's not even 6 in the morning yet. Uh, got a pretty dark sky going on right now. Not what we wanted to see, but I have faith that these guys will get up early and get us out of here before any kind of system rolls in. Packing down the tent right now. I've already got all my sleeping bag and everything all packed away. We're gonna leave Kyle's tarp up just in case. But we need to be ready to go if they come. 
So that's what we're doing. No food. Time to go. Wish us luck. I'll keep you with us. These pants have seen better days. I got these brand new right before the trip. <laughs> they used to be like something like this color. Everything's packed up now. We're just sitting here waiting for hopefully the plane to come. It's a little bit clear. Cleared up here. Got everything packed up now. It's cleared up here, but I guess it's uh, low visibility in Red Lake, so they're just waiting to take off. Probably gonna have to stay here for a few more hours. What? I'm gonna go find a log and carve a ball, and we're gonna call it Wilson. Okay, sounds good. I'll put my real hair on it. Yes. <laughs> it is just the, the, the unknown that sucks, you know what I mean? It's like when we saw that plane come in and then have to leave yesterday, it was completely understandable that the skies opened up on us, but anyway, yeah, it's just the unknown sitting here waiting. We're both very hungry. Plane should be coming in a few hours, I, I really hope. So until then, this is what we do. We sit here with our bag and Kyle. We, we break little twigs on the ground into it, keeps us amused. Mm -hmm. We got this for hours. canoe ready. Still have the tarp set up because <laughs> who knows? Because of yesterday, so. Uh, just waiting, just waiting. Quite apparent that weather dictates this park. Everything revolves around it. And I hear thunder in the distance. Thunder or airplane? I'd like to say an airplane. I think airplane. Yeah. Airplane. But it's thunder. Big weather here. So if you are planning on coming here, just be prepared. Bring a bit extra food like we did. We had two days extra. This is a third day extra. Um, now we're out and we could go fishing, but we just have no energy or desire. So just sit here until the plane comes. But that's the thing. Yeah. So plan, 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 plan. Have extra of everything. Give yourself extra time on, on, the, on the lease side if you're getting flown out. Because um, if you have to go to work the next day or something like that, you might not make it. It's just how it is or you could paddle out um if you plan to fly in you could paddle out and then that, then you can really um be in control of your own destiny really if that's your plan and you already know you're going to do it you're going to have food for it you're going to stop at the at the spot where you need to start paddling out um yeah all this stuff so just a uh, word to the wise this is an awesome place an awesome park big weather Big fish, lots of fish, remote wilderness, but it is a true wilderness class park. There's no bones about it. This is the realest deal probably that I've been on. What do you, uh, Kyle got helicoptered off of a mountain, so maybe not for him, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's true out here. Well, that doesn't look promising. Moving right in. We got sun here. That's all coming in. <coughs> all right, folks. It's not looking good. It's past noon now. No flights, so I'm going to go back to the other side of this um, campsite and try to fish. Try to get a walleye for us for supper. It seems like some weather's coming in again, and I don't want to be out on the boat when it's storming. I really don't want to be out on the boat at all. I don't have any energy to paddle around, but if I can't catch a uh, walleye from back here, then I'll get in the boat, and I know where I can go get one. So, let's go try our look at some survival fishing. Real deal stuff now, boys and girls. Absolutely no food left. Kyle and I, I had like 
like a quarter, like not even a quarter of a, a thing of oatmeal left. And Kyle and I split it for lunch and a half of Snickers. And that's it, all gone. So here is the back of the campsite. I'll try to get a fish off here. Success, I got a pike. I don't even care. Eating pike. Kyle cleaned up the pike, but uh, we knew that it wasn't gonna be enough meat, especially for the full day. So I did end up getting out on the boat and grabbing two of these uh, all right eating size walleye. So now we have food for today, which is not too shabby. Good job, Joe. Thanks. Man. Thank you, sir. sitting here splitting up wood while we board. We've been splitting up a little bit of kindling here for the bush buddy while we're bored today. Some twigs there and then nice big pot of meat. So we're gonna sit here and feast on this pike and walleye. Just got a little bit of water in the frying pan. We're all out of lard obviously. So bush buddy rocking. The frying pan wants to stay. water just so it doesn't stick and burn. Okay. Might be our fucking ride, dude. I think that's us. Hope to God it is. Look at him or wall I can eat. Please look like you man. Are you our float plane? Are you all right out of here? Please be your plane. Looks like it. You can see the orange, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see the yellow. No, I mean, I'm, he can see us, right? Yeah, I mean, he should be able to. Come on, big guy. Come on in for a landing. Thank you, left. Thank you, left. Oh. Okay, what? Yeah, he's coming. Kyle.
Uh, there's no way to get the plane over there, right? Eh? Yeah, I got into enough north at 100 miles from here yesterday. Okay, now we're gonna get home. Or? Yeah, we thought we might be living here in this island for the rest of our lives. Yeah, give a good time. Yeah, I mean, I kept saying we need to make a Wilson. Oh yeah. Oh, it's roasting mud. Yeah, I'll, I'll take roasting airplane over to the campaign in the week. Thank you. Oh, man. All right, guys, that's it. Salvation plane has come. Ten days in the wild <laughs> with this man. Yeah. Um, I had a fun for the first half. <laughs> the second three days, not so much, but whatever. We will remember this. Uh, we made some really good memories, I think, long term. No doubt, for the rest of our lives. So. For sure. Thanks for watching. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs> We're in the plane. I need a beer and pizza. Oh, my bad. goodness.